Hello, fish heads. Jen Crevasse, Jekyll Bates. It's Saturday. You guys are going to see this on Sunday. So these are going out the door. Let's get right into it. This is a three inch popper and it is from Dinger Bates. There's actually a little bit of reflectivity in the properties on the inside of this. Um, the holographics or the foiling, it's not really foiling. It's There's a prism on the inside of these. It's kind of the way some of the um, wiggle warts are coming out some of the blanks these days it's not altogether really clear but i guess if you were going to keep it more transparent than this you would see a little bit more i guess it would make more sense if i showed you what it looked like to begin with sometimes i often wonder if i'm even making sense so this is what i mean it's kind of cool this is what it looks like on the inside, and this is done on the inside of the blank. It's not done on the outside, so there's really no messy foil. It's a cool process. This is from Dinger. Um, it's got two weight chambers in it. It's got some tail weighting that stays put, which is cool because it sits up in the water like this. Uh, about this much of the bait is going to be out of the water as it sits. And then you have a really good rattle sound to it as well. So. It's not a one tap or a two tap it's two independent chambers that move and a heavier weight in the back and it's a really good popper it's one of my favorite poppers but it does have the really cool holographic properties these are going out to mike this is a six piece and this is the three inch winter gill the winter green the green sunfish which i always have fun doing these it's one of my favorites it's actually one of your favorite patterns to do as well or for me to do you know i really there's not enough coffee in the world this morning um yeah so we're gonna just try for complete sentences and move on next up is the shelt and you can see that this is a pre-foiled holographic bait you can see it really well in the cheeks right here but it does the entire thing is reflective normally on these natural trout patterns and i have them listed on the website this one's uh, part of a six-piece order that's going out from mike this morning um, normally I do the Doris metallic mesh. It's not the scaled mesh, but I really wanted to kind of do something differently. Now, Mike, you ordered a, um, a standard lipless on this, but I gave you the pre-foiled because for a trout, I really, not so much the scaling effect, but I really like to feature that, um, that pearl, the foil underneath on these. And I think it's real helpful in these trout patterns um, just because you don't have a whole lot of scales. The scales are very small on trout, but for this, it really serves a dual purpose. Now this, um, I might tag it to the end of the video, but I might not. This is part of a garlic produce bag, and it's thicker than most of the produce stuff that I see out there. It's also, um, it's got some flexible properties to it, and the stuff that I have is kind of worn out, but I do need to go to Walmart later on today. It's in the produce department. It's probably, it's probably at most grocers in the produce department if you guys are into uh, cooking and use fresh, gar fresh garlic, or if you just want to ward off vampires or bad spirits or what have you. Uh, it's multi-purpose for garlic. But uh, in all seriousness, it also makes a fantastic scale, and it will stretch a little bit, which is what I like about it, and it's completely reusable. And uh, if you've ever seen, like, the garlic in a three-pack, that's what it is. Next up is this cool showstopper in the craw. This is that Dinger S, that wide-lipped square bill that Brian has over at DingerCustomBaits.com or DingerBaits.com, whatever. Uh, yeah, one will get you there. The uh, the DingerCustomBaits.com will not, unless he owns that as well. But I, I think it's just DingerBaits.com. Anyways, go check. You know, I just really am having a hard time communicating with you guys this morning. Maybe it's because I was uh, up late last night working. No idea. But this is really cool. Love the eyes on this. Everybody's been asking where they can get these really glow, fun eyes. Now... I use a lot of stuff from Jetson, from John over at Jetson um, back there. But these it come in about five or six colors. They're from Lure Parts Online. 
Um, you can get them, if you just look at their 3D eyes, you'll find them. There's chrome, there's red, there's yellow, there's the, the yellow is really like an ultraviolet glow, cool yellow, as is their green. They have a fluorescent, well here, let me show you. I mean, that's all of this is always show and tell for you guys. But I want you guys to look for, that is your number. And they come in a bunch of, oh look, red, white, and blue, America. Um, this is the number. This is 2818060045. That'll at least get you in the right area. But lots of different sizes and colors. I have yet to find fluorescent orange, which I would love. Um, but you'd have to go to John over at Jetsons. But Lore Parts Online has got some pretty decent stuff as well. So, you know, I go, I'm not just one place or another. I try and give you guys every place that I've used to give you guys the most options with what you can do with stuff. And this is that green. Look at that. Look at that. Look at how cool that green is. Uh, it looks like it's just, well, this, this is the toxic uh, crawl pattern anyways. And it just looks that much more toxic and nuclear. I haven't done one of these in a while. Love doing this pattern. Love using fluorescence. Just makes a lot of sense to me. Especially if you're in stained water. And the more red, the merrier this time of year. Reds and oranges do really well. So we are blowing through. Let's see what we have left. This, I'm not sure I'm 100% happy with it. I like what I was able to do with the eyes. Again, these are those lower parts online. Apparently I'm featuring them this, this morning. Not intentionally, but that seems like I used a lot of them yesterday. And then I just painted with a Q-tip a very small pupil in white, opaque white. And you can always do that kind of stuff just to get a little extra effect on your eyes. Now this, the original intention of the hand cut stencil that I did, you can see it here, uh, was a dove. And it was for a dear friend up in Indiana who's part of a, a bass group whose father had passed away. So I did it as a dove, but I kind of like it in a tropical, this is almost a tropical color format, if you will. Um, so I almost want to call it parrot head, but then I'm like, no, I can't do that because it's a dove and I don't want to offer any disrespect towards what its original intent was. So I don't know, I, I need to come up with a name for this and I think I need your help to do that. So tell me, what would you name this? Um, it's definitely tropical. It's definitely got some pearl properties to it. I love the eyes, but I have no idea what to call this thing. So help me out. Give me some ideas. Leave them in the comments. Next up, I've got two of these. I really, really like the way the purple one came out, only because you can. it really portrays the depth in here, just through the method that I always use in uh, angling the spray for different colors over top of existing colors. Uh, I did two of these, one with black veins, and this has got the red veins, so it almost looks like a molten lava um, that's cooling off up top, but you can still see the, the lava flow underneath. Really love the way this came out. This is just a regular transparent red underneath, um, but I think that fluorescent orange or fluorescent red would look really good on this as well. It's just for out-of-the-box stuff. You know me. If it's wild, I'll try and figure out a way to make it wilder. But it is a cool pattern. Love these eyes. These are glass eyes from Amazon. Um, occasionally you can find them. Occasionally you can't. I, I usually don't have any problems putting these and keeping them on top water baits or shallow. When you when you get a deeper than a wake bait, you're going to run into the possibility of chipping the the glass in the eye if you're beating them on stuff like rocks in the bottom and whatever substrate is down there but you usually feel pretty confident putting them on top water and putting them on wake baits because that's pretty high up there in the water column here's the red version of that it's a cool little pinwheel on the inside of the eye but this is the red and it, it didn't not quite as much as far as the depth only because that i mean that purple it's, it's a darker darker color darker contrast to begin with but this has got the black veins or gray throughout a little more prominent seeing them on this side and that's just the way the cookie crumbles or the way the mesh was laid out last but certainly not least actually we got a couple of little guys i'm going to show you here in a second just 
talk about those briefly. This is the Breeding Rainbow. I don't know why I'm thinking of Jimmy Fallon. He did a Doors spoof reading rainbow that's something completely different again i'm not making any sense this morning whatsoever that's okay you guys are used to that with me by now breeding rainbow good blue color good winter color love that one last but not least i'm changing hands uh, i need to go get new gorilla grip pod for a smaller tripod this morning this is a little mini finesse and if you guys saw the video from last Sunday of me, yeah, I, by the end of the day, I was just really frustrated because I kept hooking up on really nice fish and losing them because I had, and it was just, I was testing these out. Um, haven't done a whole lot of testing with them. They swim really, really well. They're weighted well. For a small finesse lipless, th they're absolutely fantastic. But when I'm just trying to beat them up, I don't put real good hooks on my testers that I'm testing with. Almost as if I was still competing and I'm shaking it off doing pre-fishing stuff. But it was frustrating by the end of the day, so apologies. I did curse a little bit. If you haven't watched that video, stop this. Go back, watch that video. And then come back and you'll be like, aha. But this time, folks, I've got a trout and then I made, uh, we have a lot of sculpin in our water. So I made a sculpin pattern. It almost looks like a rock bass. Uh, but sculpin are very prominent in our rivers around here and our clear rivers. So I did that one and I did. And we're going to take them out hopefully in the next week or so and do some more testing with them. Um, but they're getting owner stinger hooks. I'm not messing around with the hooks this time, folks, because I really, it's, it's really great when you guys see that I catch with, you know, what I have and you would have seen a lot more hookups if I would have had decent hooks on the ones from last Sunday, but go watch that video. Um, I, I only lose my mind at one point when I have lost like three fish back to back to back and they were all good sized fish. So it does happen. I did hook up on that video several times though, had a fun video. But that is all I've got for you guys this afternoon. Yes, I know. It feels like I've been talking for hours. Hope you guys have a fantastic day. Thanks for watching. As always, happy casting from Jekyll Bates.